Hey, it's Andrea, Beats by Britain, and I'm going to show you something new that, actually new, old, very old, that I just acquired and I've decided to add to my Logic uh, drum programming equipment. It's an Akai Professional XR20. It's old piece of equipment, and it's a drum machine. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Logic control this. All the tempo information, everything's going to come from Logic. So this is what you see when you first turn it on. It's going to default to uh, the first drum set, the first factory drum set in the list. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, so you just turn it on, and then you hit System Setup down here. And then you're going to hit the Page buttons to page to the first option, which is MIDI channel. And you're going to change the MIDI channel. It will send and receive on all MIDI channels or just one at a time. And since drum MIDI is pretty much always transmitted and received on channel 10, I changed it to channel 10. All right, you're going to hit the page button to page to the next one. Drum in means if you have a another drum module, like um, a drum, um, like e-drums, and you want that to, you want the e-drums to communicate with this, then you change drum in to on. So it will receive signal from your drum kit. In this case, I don't anymore, so um, I'm just going to use this this drum machine right here. So there are no other drum machines connected to it. So drum in is off. Hit the page button again. Drum out is on. That means this is going to be sending um, drum signal out from the drum machine into Logic. All right. Page again. And that's for note mapping, which I'm not going to change. This is the important thing. You want the drum machine to receive MIDI clock information from Logic. That is going to default to off, like that. So you're going to change that. With this, with the turn wheel, you're going to change that to on. This, that way this becomes a slave to Logic. All right. And you're going to hit the page button again. Clock out off. Now you can send MIDI clock information to Logic. Uh, from this, um, but in this, it's in most cases. If you're going to use a DAW, in most cases, it's best to let the DAW be the master. So it's best to, when you're using this in, in connection with um, Cubase or Logic or Pro Tools or anything like that, is to let your DAW be the master and let it control the drum machine. So Logic, in this case, is going to send uh, tempo information, drum kits, and everything like that. It's going to send it all to the Akai. So I don't want the Akai doing anything but being a slave. So in this case, the clock out is off. You hit the page button again. And yeah, we don't we have to pay attention. Program change. You want program change to be on so that that way it enables uh, Logic to um, to call up program changes on this. That program changes being your um, uh, your your drum kit presets. So we're gonna hit page again and just keep going through that. Make sure that all right. So really, that's all we need to change. I'm gonna go back to the beginning again. That's the beginning. After you hit system setup. Um, it's uh, you have to select the MIDI channel that you want this to communicate with and I chose 10. Drum in uh, should be off unless you have another drum machine connected to this. Drum out should be on that way it sends drum signal out from this into Logic. Clock in should be on that way Logic that way uh, this will respond to uh, the MIDI clock settings that are coming from Logic. MIDI clock signal. Clock out should be off because 
I want logic controlling this, not the other way around. And that's it. So then you hit System Setup again to save it. And then we go into Logic. So now that we've got our drum machine, our drum sequencer, in this case it's an Akai Professional XR20, we've got that configured to communicate with Logic the way I showed you in the previous clip. Now we're going to open Logic. And this is just a template, a blank template. Well, it's a template that I've created, but there's nothing recorded on it. This is a template I use for all my new projects. Uh, I, uh, I always use, these are called global templates up here, arrangement, marker, signature, and tempo. And I always use my global templates. I just find it so much easier to, uh, to write music when I've got all the global templates visible and I have my arrangement markers set up. It's just a lot easier. So because uh, the drummer track in Logic uses the arrangement markers and uh, it's just easier for me. So anyway, this is my default template that I use when I'm creating any kind of music for when I'm working on something for the first time. And these are all track stacks. All right. Anyway, so now that I've got my uh, my Akai XR20 drum machine set up, configured on the machine, I'm going to open Logic and we're going to go to File and then Project Settings and Synchronization. Now, uh, this is 10.7.4 Logic. Other versions of Logic have the same thing. The screen doesn't look the same, but you're going to have your MIDI synchronization. They're, you're going to have some kind of a tab in there for MIDI synchronization, and that's what you want. So, we're going to open synchronization, then we're going to open MIDI. And by default, that's going to be, it's going to be blank like that because you have to add your equipment. So for the destination, what you want Logic to do is you want Logic to send or send and receive information from the Akai. So you have to click on the drop down arrow key and when you do that it's going to show all of your external MIDI gear that you have connected. So I'm going to choose my Akai XR20 drum machine and you want to make sure to tick off clock that way uh, Logic knows to listen to or transmit uh, clock information, that's the tempo, and uh, MIDI time code. So you want these two things ticked off. Under clock mode, it's going to default to pattern. Uh, if you, you can pick any of these other things right here. Um, but notice how it's got the cycle jump listed in there. That means you have to set a cycle range uh, for it to work. If you just, it's going to default, if you don't pick anything, it's going to default to pattern. And that's fine. Leave it like that. The important thing is down here under uh, next to transmit MIDI machine control and listen to MIDI machine control input. You want to tick off listen to MIDI machine control input because it's coming from the Akai. You want logic to listen. You don't want logic to transmit. You just want logic to listen. Logic is the master. The drum machine is the slave. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Do that. Close this window out. Now, notice how I haven't even added a track yet. I have not added anything to record from my drum machine. From here, from this point out, all I have to do is click on play. And what you hear is my drum sequencer playing. Logic is controlling the drum sequencer. If I click on stop, the drum sequencer stops. Nothing's recording because it's just the sequencer playing. And Logic is sending tempo information to the sequencer. So if I change the tempo to 60, if I change the tempo to anything, the sequencer is now playing at the tempo that Logic set. So 
So logic is controlling the sequencer, sending tempo information and controlling the sequencer. And although my camera isn't on, if you look at the Akai XR20, there's a window actually on any sequencer. There will be a window on the sequencer that displays the tempo information, but if since logic is controlling the tempo, you're going to see X's there instead of an actual tempo on the on the sequencer. You're going to see X's there or lines or something like that because the machine, the sequence, the uh, the external device is no longer controlling the tempo. The tempo is being controlled by logic. So I think that's really cool. And you know, I don't even have to have a track. I could just play the sequencer and punch in on one of these other tracks and start recording something. So the sequencer is not recording anything, it's just playing in the background. I think that's pretty cool. But if we want to add the sequencer as an external MIDI device, all we do is new track, external MIDI, MIDI destination is going to be Yurikai, and I want it. I only want it to use channel 10, so I'm choosing the Akai on channel 10, and click on create. Okay. Now, probably de by default, it's gonna the track is gonna be named um, Akai XR20. Um, I've been fooling with this so much now that it's called Standard Kit, but I don't really care. What you're gonna do is that that's your new external MIDI kit all, over here on the left. These are all your track options that show up under external MIDI devices. You're gonna make sure the MIDI import is the Akai or whatever sequencer you have. You're going to make sure the MIDI in channel is 10 or whatever channel you have your sequencer set up to send and receive over. Actually to receive over. Okay, MIDI out port, you want to make sure that is the Akai or your sequencer. MIDI out channel, you want to make sure that matches the MIDI in. Okay. All right. I've got this armed to record. I'm not actually going to record anything yet. All I'm going to do is hit play. And you'll see that the channel is getting signal. All right, and that's how it works. So if I want to record, I'm going to hit record and I have a pre-roll set up to where, I think I have a pre-roll set up to where it's going to count in to yeah, two bars. Okay. All I got to do is arm the kit, arm this to record. And what it's doing is it's calling up. See, I've got the program change option ticked off here. So Logic is calling up different kits that I've created on the Akai. This is a standard kit. And I didn't really know what else to call the other. I've only created two, these first two. This is going to be, I think it's a Latin kit. I just I haven't named them yet. So if I, we play that. Yeah, it's a cajon. Cajon and congas and stuff like that. All right. Let's change the tempo to something more reasonable like 70. Okay. All right. Now I've got my track arm to record. I'm going to hit record. It's going to give me a two bar count in. And then it's, there we go. So now it's recording from my external sequencer. And if I had a camera on, you could see the external sequencer responding to the commands that Logic is sending it. That's it. And then play. And that's it. That's my external drum machine that Logic is controlling completely. Logic is sending um, tempo change, um, the tempo changes to it, and Logic is also calling up the drum kits on it. That's not it. There it is. Let's see what this one sounds like. So if I click on the programs 
it's going to call up the different drum kits. Um, this was a used Akai XR20, so the previous owner probably set up drum kits on here. I just haven't named them. Well, let's pick this one, see what this one sounds like. Okay, I really don't like that, but <laughs> anyway. So this is one that I created. So that's how you set up your uh, an external uh, sequencer. In this case, it's a drum machine. So that the drum machine is the slave and Logic is controlling it completely, sending tempo information uh, and, uh, and so forth to it. And um, I have found that in, in, uh, in recording with this that I really don't have any latency at all. Um, everything is pretty much spot on. All my other tracks that I've that I've recorded uh, uh, that I've recorded using the drum machine um, as a, as a drum track, everything else is um, I have no latency issues whatsoever in Logic with this. So anyway, have fun with all your old MIDI gear and um, talk to you later.